Hello again and welcome to the Alexandra Wenman Show. I'm so happy to have the lovely Pam Gregory back on the show for the second time. I'm so blessed. Hi, Pam. How are you doing? Really well. Thanks, Alexandra. And I love the conversation we had last time. It was just so uplifting and, and it just flowed. And we, you know, I, I never rehearse these interviews or, or we just kind of flow in the conversation. And, and I think flowing could be quite an important word for this one. So I'm really looking forward to sharing with you again. Thank you. I agree. I totally agree. I never prepare questions I'm just sort of fed them from the universe and it always ends up being the right the right sort of well as we did last time it just all comes together and I, I, I just get goosebumps because so many of these topics to me are so exciting and there's nothing off limits so I think let's let's for want of a proverbial um, word let's dive in <laughs> so you and I have been talking a lot you know on camera and off camera about water and how much the significance of water has really come to the fore on this planet right now. And um, one of the things that my guides have been talking about is how, without us even knowing, we've been manipulated through water and through the waters of our body and things like this. But so I've been doing a lot of work on making sure that we bless the waters. I know that you've spoken a lot about Masaru Emoto and Veda Austin and people like that who very much know that water has a beautiful consciousness of its own. And my Water Alchemy Oracle, I talk about that as well. But can you talk to us a little bit about the astrology of this? Like what is happening to the water? What does the astrology point to in terms of the consciousness of water? Yeah, gosh, wow. So, so much to say. I, I think that there are a couple of really big things that are bringing water into prominence right now. One is that Saturn has moved into Pisces and will stay there until spring, uh, spring Northern Hemisphere 2026. And the ruler of Pisces, Neptune, is already there and will stay there actually until 2026, spring 2026 as well. So, they are both co-present in, in Pisces, and Pisces is all about water. It's the most sensitive water sign. So they are highlighting the importance of water. And Saturn is really is the planet par excellence of structure. So I think we're going to be learning an awful lot about the importance of structured water and how water that comes through our taps is, is unstructured because it goes through lots of right angles and that disturbs the natural um, structure that you get in a mountain spring or a waterfall or, or that kind of thing. So, But also another very big thing is there's a dwarf plant called Sedna. Sedna has an 11,400 year orbit wow. and she's coming closer and closer in her orbit to the earth. And when she does that, she'll bring an extraordinary amount of galactic information with her. And because she, she orbits right out to the edge of what's called the Oort cloud and bumps up against you know, other galaxies, et cetera. But her myth is very powerful because there are variations on the myth, but in short, she was a kind of young maiden who was promised a beautiful marriage by this young man. And off she went with this young man and married him. And he kind of betrayed all, all his promises. And, and so her father came to rescue her and, um, and they set off in a canoe, but a big storm blew up. And her father threw her overboard into the storm out of the canoe. And when she tried to climb back in, he chopped her fingers off. <laughs> no. so, so you know the patriarchy does not come that well out of this myth but what happened was a complete spiritual transformation because she she had to let go she couldn't hang on and she just drifted down to the deep arctic waters because she's the goddess of the of the inuit people um she she transformed into these beautiful sea creatures of turtles and whales and dolphin she became these exquisite new creatures in the in the deep so there's something about letting go of a known structure saturn also rules the patriarchy top-down structures governments corporations do what we tell you elitist rich people at the top poor people at the bottom letting go of what we've thought is our security to release and that may feel you know very scary because we don't know where we're going but actually we're going into this huge spiritual transformation and, and, and new, new forms in nature, new consciousness for ourselves. So the myth of Sedna 
is very highlighted at the moment because she's right kind of at end of Taurus and just moved into Gemini. So when a, a, a planet with that long an orbit changes sign, it becomes very highlighted and she's in very strong aspect to, to lots of, you know, she's trying Pluto and lots of other aspects. So, so water is, is going to be a big deal. I, I don't know if I was comprehensible there, but... Oh, completely. Be- I'll tell you. So what the guides have been talking to me about and what they're saying now is this is all about co-creation with water. And I think we discussed this before, and I've definitely made videos on it, about how water is an amplifier and it's a lens through which we can project our intentions and amplify our 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 positive vision for the planet that we want to see. And the more that we can project the positive vision into the water, the more it creates. But if we think about the waters of the primordial waters of earth, which is where all life began, that links in to the waters of the womb and the co-creation of the womb and the great cosmic womb. And I, what I'm finding is if we think of water as a a metaphor for emotions, for the feminine energies on the planet, not necessarily women essentially, but the feminine energies on the planet, this speaks to me as a new way of co-creation where we've completely forgotten all of the magic and the mystery and and the the manifestation techniques, and this is all coming to the fore, that we need the, the masculine and feminine to bridge those worlds. The other thing they're saying is, we're going to start seeing in terms of fertility on this planet, very, very high frequency children coming through. And I'm already seeing it in my personal kind of peer groups and friendship groups. And I've had weird experiences myself, which I'm not going to go into now, but we're going to start seeing really um, not conventional pregnancies, a lot more home births and natural births coming through women as these high frequency kids come through and pregnancies that are weird and out of the norm. So I know two women in particular, I know one woman who, and this is going to sound absolutely fantastical to people watching this, but I know one woman who had a 17 month pregnancy. Um, She was told by doctors that she was making it up, that it was psychosomatic. No pregnancy test showed the baby. Uh, The scans didn't show the baby. But 17 months after she was told she was having a Venus birth by her guides, she gave birth to a healthy baby boy at home in the bathtub. So that's just one example of this incredible shift in consciousness that's going on and how the waters are supporting this. And we're having, you, you were talking about the astrology backing up a lot of cosmic information coming through and that's coming through to us in our knowledge, but it's also coming through in very high masters being born on this planet at this time. I think these kids Some of them haven't even incarnated in this dimension before. It's phenomenal. So they would call it, I guess scientists would call it a cryptic pregnancy. But I know a few of these women having um, incredible, weird, bonkers, what we would call completely not normal pregnancies as we co-create this new world. So we're really pushing boundaries here. That is so beautiful because as, as you're speaking, Alexandra, I'm, you know, what's in my head very clearly is the dwarf planet Homer that represents the higher octave of Venus. Wow. So, <laughs> very much divine feminine. And in the myth, she was able to birth babies from all over her body, not just the normal places. She could reverse her age from an old crone to a young maiden. She has incredible creative and regenerative um, abilities. And she is one of the big, big, big symbols of, of New Earth for us. So this ability to sort of birth babies from all, <laughs> all over her body, but also she could birth new land because in the myth, in her fire, goddess expression she was said to birth the new land the eight islands of hawaii through and she birthed new land and we've also got uranus and taurus that is literally new earth so homer i think is leading to these very unusual pregnancies but also to these to, to this incredible higher consciousness that we're going to experience because the other thing she was able to do in the myth she had a, a magic stick called a makalai and even where, you know, the, the sea was polluted and the land was laid waste through poor agricultural practices and people thought they were starving, she could just wave her magic stick, the makalai, and, and create wild food. Wow. This so is, there's something yeah. about her regenerative creative abilities, I think, that gives 
and there are other things too, but that, that give me a lot of confidence that we can turn things around, that when we look at the earth and think, oh my goodness gracious, what a mess that we've created. I think things are gonna turn around faster than we, we imagine. Right. And, and the children, I think, are going to lead the fray with that, actually. I completely agree. And I think there's, there's something in the wisdom, the wisdom of women and the wisdom of children, the wisdom of the vulnerable, those who have sort of struggled on alone, who haven't been supported in this patriarchal system, who've really had to, you know, almost bend over backwards to keep their own world afloat. Their wisdom and their, their way of seeing the world, that compassion, that love is going to start leading the charge. And they very much show me it like there's a, we call it the changing of the guard, right? And this has been going on for a long time, but the pandemic really accelerated this. But I'm seeing that those that have kind of been on the back foot, the innocent, where they have suffered for the mistakes and I guess the the decisions that people have made through greed and through tyranny and control, they're going to start shifting from this, this kind of pushing everyone else forward, supporting everyone else. They're going to start shifting to the top of the pyramid and it's le very much leading with love, leading with the heart and, you know, making sure that everyone is supported, but they have to step up. And I see these people, many of them are women. I want to say I, I, I'm meeting a lot of powerful women who I would, put in the category of wise women the rise of the wise woman is 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 really at, at the fore here and that's not to negate anyone who identifies as a woman or anything else but I there's a separate thing about that which is also very magical about gender neutrality that I'd love to talk about but the rise of the wise woman is really you know and, and when we spoke briefly yesterday we talked about how historically in tribes there was there was the chief who would be the masculine and take care of the practicals but there was always the magical woman that would lead with him that would be the medicine woman and i'm seeing this balance coming back on the planet again now and it's just so fantastic so so what does the astrology say to this rebalancing going on here yeah there's a lot of very strong kind of divine feminine principles you know coming to the fore particularly in these dwarf planets i mean we've got homer we've got Selassia that i'll talk about in a moment we've also got eris and as you were talking you know you were talking about people who are of vulnerable or on the periphery of society or felt excluded that's what eris is about eris um in myth was the only goddess who wasn't invited to the wedding on Mount Olympus. So she turned up anyway and created mayhem because she threw a golden apple into the group of, um, of other goddesses and said, for the fairest, and they all kind of fought each other. And that was said to, to uh, lead to the Trojan War. But so she stands for people who've been excluded from society on the periphery, the vulnerable, the people who've had no voice, um, she stands for truth, justice and equality, big time. And what's so interesting right now is just literally in the last couple of weeks, as the North Node has moved into Aries, it has become conjunct to Eris. And that conjunction is going to become tighter and tighter through September, October. In Northern Hemisphere, well, it's the whole word, but it's it's our autumn, Northern Hemisphere. So that is really saying that the symbolism, the archetype of Eris, is going to come to the fore in terms of not only women have to have, she's the warrior sister of Mars. She's a wow. female principal. She's a feisty, you know, powerful woman, but she will not compromise. She will fight to the end to make sure everybody's included because she was excluded from the wedding and the myth. So, you know, because the North Node, the North Node is our collective soul's path of growth in this lifetime. So as it comes tighter and tighter, September, October, it's exact, but it's, it's already operational now. That has to play out in society collectively. That's incredible. And, and Selassia is another beautiful expression of, of divine feminine because Selassia, it's interesting you're talking about mermaid energy. In myth, she was mermaid energy. She was the wife of Neptune and she's linked to um, the shimmering moonlight and sunlight on the sea. To me, she is photonic energy, this very high frequency um, light that we, we're getting now as we move through the galactic current sheet, which only happens about 12,000 years. And so she is helping us um, upgrade through the incorporation, the assimilation of 
this new photonic light, which we've never had to assimilate, you know, in many, many lifetimes at such speed. And what's so interesting, I was listening to Dr. Zach Bush the other day, and he was talking about, you know, the importance in this evolution that we are embodying more light in our bodies and being able to hold it. But what holds the light in the body is the water, the quality of water. You know, she, she's no made into the quality of water in the body. And that leads us on to another whole discussion. So isn't it interesting? It's so interesting because the other thing that the guides were saying to me, I was channeling loads of information while I was in Thailand recently, and they were talking to me about the water, the femininity, but also our sexual energy and how our sexual energy acts very much like water, 1515 on the clock as I'm saying this. And part of how we have been very manipulated or conditioned on this planet has been through our sexual desire body you know we think of advertising media people you know opinions all of that stuff but particularly the feminine sexual energy has been used and often misused because that's where magic and um you know power is kind of used to reframe the fabric of reality and i you know i see a lot in my work that there's been a heck of a lot of black magic used on this planet under behind the scenes and that's part of what i do going around sort of neutralizing some of that um but it's very interesting to me because what i'm seeing now when you talk about that plasma coming through i see plasma the energy of plasma very much like water and there are times when i'm working that it's like I could actually run my hands through the energy like I would run my hands through water. It's very tangible. But what I'm seeing, especially in a lot of women now, is that a lot of the conditioning is just wearing off. And I think it is because of this light, this photonic light coming through. So you're getting people, and, and, and not just women, but I'm particularly seeing it because a lot of my clients are women, where they're having 180 degree about face from what they thought they wanted in their lives, where they thought, oh, I'll get married, I'll have the children, I'll follow the the what I'm supposed to do with my life as a woman, become the mother, da 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 da, da. tick all those boxes. And all of a sudden, all these women, it's like the blinkers have come off and they've gone, hang on a minute, what's in this for me? What about me? I'm seeing myself personally how the womb is such a powerful portal it is absolutely powerful and we are literally birthing new worlds so you're talking about Homia ticks so many boxes for me because when I work with manifestation I work very much with womb energy and I do a lot of uh, soul midwifery I actually can help souls to ascend after they pass I've done a lot of death doula work but also a lot of helping babies to be born and it's a huge gateway but I kind of feel like as we're talking, there's a message here that I feel specifically going out to these women that are stepping into their wise woman selves, that that can feel like really shaky ground and it can make you feel like you're going a bit mad when you start letting go of people pleaser, you're rewiring your whole brain. And I just wanna say to those women, you're not alone, you're not going mad, you're coming into your power and anger is a valid human emotion. So if you feel like you just like raging, <laughs> Just call your anger into your heart and use it as a like a white, clean fire and send it out to anything that's not resonating with you. We're really resetting the scene here. And I think instead of focusing on what we don't want, we really need to start focusing on what are we creating? What are we birthing? What do we want? What lens are we looking through? What window do we want to look at the world through? Um, and I really feel like th these, these wise women are leading the charge. There's also a feng shui. Um, something to do with feng shui. I think we mentioned this last time about how we're leaving the era of youngest son and we're coming into eldest daughter. So it's like really watch out because wise women and older women especially are really stepping up into their power and I just love that. So sorry, that was a bit of a terrain. No, no, I just get so excited about the, the whole, all of it. <laughs> so, in, you know, because as you're speaking, Alexandra, I'm I, I'm seeing the astrology of it. Because Amazing. It's, um, as you were talking about women coming into their, their power, what's in it for me, I'm an individual. This is absolutely about the North Node, which has just shifted into Aries and will be there for the next 18 months until January 2025. But the south end of the nodal axis is kind of what we're what we're losing, what, what's in the collective past, what we've done. And that's about people pleasing, being wow. compliant, fitting in, don't rock the boat, 
go with the system, do with what you're told, you know, be well behaved in class, well behaved as a, as a parent or a mother, whatever. And so people are stepping into not so much their warrior selves, but a, a very individual sense of self. Which the wild know, selves, really, isn't it? Coming back into the wildness. Yes, absolutely, which they may never have really sensed to this degree before. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting because this is an 18.6-year cycle. And if I look back to the last time that happened, I left my marriage and stepped into a solo life. So, you know, I left the partnership, um, for all kinds of, you know, it was a very, I think I was a world-class doormat in that actually, but stepped into my solo role. And so that's what many people, I think many, many, many people in general, but particularly women are starting to feel. And it's so interesting you talking about, um, you know, giving birth, because that's when we talk about the waters breaking, the waters of the womb breaking. Mm -hmm. And what, what fascinates me is, Water is a form of plasma, as I understand it, because it can take many forms. It can be a liquid, a gas, a solid, whatever. But if, because all plasma is divine consciousness, therefore water potentially is consciousness. Therefore, could it be that the quality of the water we ingest will actually help to shift our consciousness? A hundred percent. I really believe that. I've really been shown, and I know we spoke briefly about it yesterday, how in Thailand, so the guides are like, okay, so we need to word this a bit carefully, but I just, in the way that I see it, I don't go down too many rabbit holes, but I ask questions. And one of my questions has been for a long time, why is our clean, free water now being bottled and sold so we have to pay to have fresh clean water why is our tap water now so full of toxins that it's no longer really safe to drink so that we have to go buy bottled water and who owns all the bottled water right so who owns it what is their agenda in having you know aside from making money and then the guide started talking to me, obviously, about Masaru Emoto and his research and how water is encodable, much like energy, much like plasma, our thoughts create our reality. So I was just asking the question of what am I actually drinking when I buy bottled water? Whose thought forms are in the water? What is their agenda? What are they packaging up to sell me? What's written on the label? And then it dawned on me, every arm spelt backwards is naive. I mean, how naive are we to think, you know, are these, are these people bottling the water, making sure we're drinking clean water? How do we know that water is clean? You know, they put on a label that it's got certain properties in it, but how do we know something else isn't going into it? Now, these are just my questions, okay? So I'm not, not going too conspiratorial, but I do ask questions. And something I always do before I drink my water is I bless it and I ask to restore it to its divine blueprint and its highest divine frequency. And I do that before I bathe in it, before I drink it, even before I get in the sea, in the ocean, you know, it's bless the waters. And there is a really stunning project that is affiliated with Dr. Emoto's work called the Water for Peace Project. And they do beautiful free meditations, mostly at 11.11 every day, wherever you are in the world, just to send peace out to the waters and bless the waters. And of course, that includes our bodies. So I love that. But I am just like water as manipulation because as we said our sexual energy our desire bodies we're barraged every day with so many things emf now it's coming through in frequency um so you don't even know what you're being programmed with just through the 5g network these days and you know there are those of us that can hear it and can see it and i'm telling you it's happening um it's weaponized so i always send love back to the source, whether it's through the water, through the plasma, through the frequency, through the airwaves, because it is the word the guides would give me is energy is malleable. It is malleable. So you never have to accept what you're being given. You choose the frequency that you operate at and then you send love back to the source of it. And actually what they're saying now, Pam, which I'm coming to you because they're saying, all of the astrology right now is supporting us to do this. So 100%. what's jumping in here for you? Yeah, 100%. It, it's just, it, it, there's just, I mean, so much of the astrology, but I've talked a lot in the recent videos about as particularly as Pluto 
enters Aquarius fully and it will be in Aquarius for nine months next year and then fully from November 2024 for 20 years. So we're going to a lot of Aquarian energy. And Aquarius, if you think of the, the glyph of Aquarius, it's two jaggedy lines and it's very much linked to energy and frequency. And I think one of the big, big, big shifts that we are going to um, step into is we are going to learn to become masters of our energy, masters of our frequency, that we don't just accept what is given to us in the air, in the EMS, whatever. We, as you say, Alexandra, absolutely, we choose. We get up in the morning and we say, I choose love. I choose joy. And we dominate. We dominate our environment with, with those emotions. And, and we know from Azure Motors work how much we can change the structure of the crystals in water just by our emotions. And it's something we haven't thought about really as humanity very much at all. You know, we've, we've regarded water as a resource. And in the Western world, you know, if you've spent any time in India, which I know you have, and I spent a lot of time in India, we're just so grateful to have water from a tap. And, and we are lucky to have water from a tap. But actually, what is the quality of that water? What is it doing to our consciousness? Because if we are 99% by molecular count water, even if we're lucky enough to have tap water that's clean, what is the frequency of the water doing to our consciousness? So I think, and, and our reality is you absolutely say spot on, is so much more malleable than we realize. The plasma, the, the, the air, the, the water, everything. And we are going to be able to step into that Pluto and Aquarius if we use it to its best and become masters of that. And just as you do, Alexandra, bless the water that you drink, bless the water in the bath, bless the water in the sea you're about to step into, and, and your reality will change around you. And, and this is where it gets very exciting. And just by the, those emotions alone, we change the structure of the crystals. Masaru Emoto showed it. You know, Vader so showed it. You know, it's, it's visible. And so you don't even have to be by the water. Like the water also is so healing to be by. She's healing us as well. She's a powerful consciousness. And I and I feel that she's feminine. She's a she. But one of the things that scientists have proven is that you don't even have to be sitting by water. You can imagine you're looking at a view of the ocean and that will have a positive impact on your, your serotonin, oxytocin levels, the, neuro, the neurons of your brain. Um, in the Water Alchemy Oracle, I've got loads of processes where you, ima you, you imagine that you're working with water, but then I've got physical processes where you're working physically with water as well. And it doesn't matter whether you do one or the other it will still have the same physiological impact on you because we're, we're part of it. It's all part of us. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, there's something as well along these lines in terms of our frequency, the raising of our frequency that's happening naturally, the waters of the body, which is to do with um, two things I think we discussed yesterday that I'd love to discuss on camera, which is, I got told uh, a while back, and the sh for the shaman among us and the shamanic healers among us, um, this is not to negate your work, but a while back I channeled a couple of different messages. And I haven't done ayahuasca or any plant medicines in this lifetime. I think my head would pro probably spin around and pop off if I did. I, I think I would probably not come I mean, back. Neither. <laughs> but I, I do I do channel plants and, and dryads and divas as well as angels and all kinds of beings. And I had a really powerful visit from Mother Aya, who is the spirit of ayahuasca. And she said to me that she is preparing to withdraw her medicine from the earth. And I asked her why. And she said, well, there's way too many people misusing it, using it as a crutch, you know, almost becoming a bit of a, you know, oh, I'm going to go do a, a plant medicine ritual and, and losing the respect for her. That's one aspect of it. And I'm not saying at all that everybody is doing that. But the other aspect of it, which is so beautiful, is just that we're reaching a level of consciousness where her support's not needed anymore. And we can reach those those other dimensions, just ourselves through our pure consciousness. So that is absolutely lovely. Shortly after I channeled that, I had a client come in and he'd received the exact same message, but he got the message through peyote medicine. So that was really interesting. And our bodies are supporting that. Our, our frequency, our, our molecular structure is evolving at such a rate. 
But on the other side of this, I think what we're going to start seeing, and I'm already seeing it with certain clients, I've seen it with myself and really recently with my mother, is that some kind of modern day medicines or allopathic medicines are becoming ineffective against certain illnesses. Um, my mom, you know, she's basically had a massive allergic reaction to antibiotics. And it's like, if you can't take antibiotics or steroids, if you have something really seriously wrong with you, where do you turn? But here's the beauty of it. And I've said for a long time, these worlds need to bridge now. Modern medicine and uh, complementary medicine, homeopathy, naturopathy, herbalism, we need to work together. And I'm seeing leaps and bounds in homeopathic medicines and remedies at the moment. And I love homeopathy. I find that it works really beautifully, definitely for me. Now, I grew up in a medical family. My dad's a doctor. My mother was a nurse. We were fed all kinds of medications as kids. But I've spent a long time now sort of stripping out the the, the side effects of those, not, not negating the way that they helped because we had childhood asthma and stuff like that, but stripping out the toxicity from the system. And now we have amazing remedies like uh, the Root brand do a, a, a beautiful zeolite thing called Clean Slate, which strips the toxins out of the body really healthily and safely. And I just think... We're now at a time where we're having leaps and bounds in modern medicine, modern technology, where we've previously misused technology, we're flipping the script and using it for healing. So I also had a client who she bought a tech company years ago and it was involved in creating weaponry, military weaponry through AI. And she flipped the whole manufacturing process. So instead of creating weapons, they were fixing hearts. They were creating body parts and, and like it was amazing. And it was a woman doing it. Like, I mean, phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. So does in terms of like the AI, the medicine, the technology, the, where we're moving in terms of healing, does, does it support all of that as well? Absolutely, because if we look at um, Pluto moving into in, into Aquarius, the, the shadow side of that can be um, the negative aspects of, of AI. You know, controlled by technology is the literal description of Pluto in Aquarius. So if you look at the Chinese credit system, for instance, that's a very obvious example of that. But at the higher expression, this can produce absolutely transformational tech, as you say, for healing. And, and this is what, you know, I've experienced quite a few now, uh, new technologies that are just amazing because they're based on natural principles of, you know, toroidal fields or you know, Tesla technology or whatever. And people are having incredible healings because it's actually based on the way that the cosmos works in terms of water seas and spin and, and toroidal fields, which is what your heart has and your, your brain has, but incorporating higher consciousness in producing these amazing texts that just change people's health, often, you know, in minutes. And that's what's so exciting. So that's where they, and, and I'm a great believer with astrology. If we focus on the positive expression of any aspect in any sign, it will use up the energy. So there's no energy left for the negative expression to, to manifest because the music has to play somehow. Yeah, I so, love that you said the music. That's all frequency again, isn't it? <laughs> frequency, you know, maths, frequency. So that's what I try and do in, in my videos to encourage people to live the positive side. And we use up the energy beautifully and then the negative has, has much less energy to manifest. So, so that's how I'm seeing it. And I think we are just really at the beginning of these incredible healing technologies. I mean, the Lemurians were way ahead of us. I mean, they yeah. were healing people in that what they had as crystal temples, as you may know, Alexandra, were just they'd have sort of um, poles of wood and they'd hang canvas over them and they built them at the top of mountains because they knew that's where the vortices of energy were, were strongest. And they'd fill that with crystals and they would heal people. And heal the earth, you know. I, I and heal the earth. really, really believe that we had a technology on this planet which would harmonise the field and I mean Tesla discovered a lot of this technology as well but it was like safe energy that could generate the power grid for example but it was also harmonize everything in terms of frequency and mathematics help the crops grow and I really believe that the pyramids were these sacred keys that would actually be placed in key locations around the planet to offset natural disasters to offset earthquakes to to harmonize the earth as we healed us we healed the earth 
and I mean, it was beautiful. I mean, and free for all. Like you know, it's just harnessing the the energy of the stars and the moon and the planets and all of that that beautiful cosmic energy that we have free for all. So I think we're heading back to that. I really do, and very rapidly. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, it's so right what you say, Alexandra. There was a harmony. You know, the Lemurian people in particular, but there've been lots of um, ancient civilizations, some of whom you know continue today with the indigenous people who just see themselves as as part of the flow of nature. And they live um, with reverence. They know that nature is sacred. They never exploit or pillage. Everything is in right relationship, right balance with nature. And they're just, just part of that. And there's something very, very beautiful and stable about it. And, you know, it's so interesting that we talk about alternative medicine, but it isn't alternative. It's original and natural. And the earth has everything we need in terms of plants and herbs to to cure any ill we have. I mean, aspirin came from the willow tree, you know, salicylic acid. So I think there is so much to discover and how we can, for instance, boost the growth of plants and vegetables just by using copper wire because it expands the electromagnetic field. And that's something as well that we're really gonna get, not only with Pluto and Aquarius, but Uranus in Taurus because Uranus rules Aquarius and they're both linked to electromagnetism. And we are going to turn on its head the sort of man-made electromagnetism that we've lived through and go back to really um, being sensitive to the energy lines of the earth and how they are becoming very activated, sacred sites becoming very activated, nodal points, etc. And that's happening all over the world. And so very often, if you simply live on an energy line that is harmonious for your system you, you'll be healed i love that and you can you can you can kind of find that out through astro cartography as well can't you to find yes. out where what would suit you the best and I, I must get that done i've never done it i just kind of go where i'm easy for me to do that for you so i can i can do that that's, oh, that's amazing. That if you know your time of birth i can easily do that i'm not doing any client work by the way <laughs> I don't you know. I just don't have any time. We'll, but... we'll call that one a favor. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But the the electricity in the body, I know, is very important for health. I know that the mitochondria, and I know that, and I don't know the full chemistry of all this, but I know that salt, which has been vilified, um, is actually incredibly important for your health because salt allows the water to take a greater electrical charge. Wow, I live on salt. I am a salt fiend. Yep. And actually, I think it, well, I don't know this for sure scientifically, but I always feel like it's supporting my nervous system, which of course is the electrical current through the body. So that would make sense, wouldn't it? And it's got to be, you know, natural salt. It's got to be, um, I suppose, Himalayan salt or uh, Celtic salt or um, Camargue salt from the salt flats down in France. They're, they're various kinds of natural salt rather than anything processed. But it contains so many minerals that we've lost in our tap water. So mm. it's not only the remineralization of the body, it's something to do with salt water can take um, an electrical charge and also crystals are made from salt salt water yeah. i understand that again and i'm talking to veda austin in a week or so but if it's distilled water my understanding is that's harder to to find and i, I mustn't sort of step out of my my area of knowledge here of the, the, salt, <laughs> the, the salt i know the sodium particularly it's natural well source sodium is really important for our health and for our electrical circuitry in the body we also know from a spiritual perspective salt is an incredible neutralizer of negative energy so you can put salt around your house if you whenever i've been to salt flats the energy is really high there i got married next to a salt flat in ibiza um, I've visited salt flats in Peru. I'm always drawn to salt, you know, and it's like salt is such a powerful protector. You can put it in the corners of your house. You can make salt grids around your home and it will neutralize negative and limiting energies very, very quickly. I don't know why that is, but it, it, it's actually fantastic as a, a neutralizing agent. And um, isn't it interesting, Alexandra, just to jump in there, for people often who've been very ill, if they go to what's called the Dead Sea, which is actually... Yes packed full of minerals and they bathe in the, the Dead Sea every day, they can turn their health around. 
Absolutely. People do those flotation tanks as well. And I visited Siwa. I was running a retreat to Egypt a few years ago. I'm going to I'm going to start running them again soon with my friend Lorraine. And we went to Siwa. We were right in the middle of the desert, drove 11 hours and ended up in these incredible natural salt pool, really t- like the color of my top, like turquoise, stunning places. But you just felt so reinvigorated afterwards. So healing. It's yeah, amazing antibacterial all of that stuff so amazing I love it um they're sorry they're badgering me they're yep. saying we need to would we would we discuss um the unexpected so I remember when I first emailed you about this interview I was told in the middle of emailing you that there's a new comet coming in and that it's not the green comet that we've recently had but they caught my guides called it the purple comet the purple comet is coming um and the purple comet, when I Googled purple comet, I got to, got saw that there is this new comet coming in. It's going to be visible in, I think, October 2024, which was discovered by the Purple Observatory, which is hilarious. Um, they what they what I'm seeing is Archangel Ratziel is very connected to this comet. I always see him as the color purple. Now, purple is all about magic, alchemy. And I'm being told that this comet really aligns to a huge rise in the alchemists and the magicians and those who are using magic and alchemy for the good of the all on the planet. So we're going to see a massive upsurge of alchemists. And and often this happens overnight. I've got clients that, you know, I've got one client in America who was basically just doing a day job working as a butcher and then had a complete, you know, visitation overnight from some wonderful star beings and then suddenly has realized who he really is and what he's here to do. So it can literally be an overnight awakening. And once it happens, uh, you can't go back. You can't forget who you were. It takes a little while, I think, to try to assimilate into day to day life. Um but I also feel that on the on the level of the unexpected, that this comet's arrival equates to a huge um, awakening globally in terms of alien, the alien question, alien life forms, um, us being aware of so much more out there. And I mean, obviously, the likes of you and I and people watching the show will be aware of it. But for the mainstream, it's probably going to seem a little bit scary. So I wonder, is there astrology that you know of that backs up all of this? Like the hundred percent, yeah, or... absolutely hundred percent. Because again, going back to Aquarius, um, with 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 Pluto um, moving into Aquarius fully for um, twenty years at the end of next year, and being there for nine months of next year, Aquarius is linked to the galactic, the outsider, the foreigner. So it's very linked to the galactic. And of course, we, all of us are made of stardust. Even Professor Brian Cox, who isn't a fan of astrology, says we are made of stardust. So that's where we came from. And many people actually have memories of living in other galaxies, etc. So that's going to be reawakened in a very big way. I mean, next year is a huge year. Um, of of jumps in in our awakening I think towards the the later months of this year we could see a lot of disclosure Um, and just make sure it isn't another really big scary thing if it's another really big scary thing think no thank you I know that these beings are are benevolent you know I may have lived amongst them in in previous lives but when we get to April next year there's a very very favorable conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus and Uranus rules Aquarius so it's the planet linked to the galactic we could see a big jump in in consciousness at that point really big and whenever Pluto enters a new sign which it's going to be doing more fully next year we have some kind of revelation we have some kind of drama around the archetype of that sign so I think there could be a lot of disclosure this year what's been hidden what's been covered over and big time jumps next year they're saying that we so we're going to actually be seeing much more um of otherworldly beings walking amongst us you know i know in lemuria it was like men women angels we all walked together as one on the earth they're saying those who have the capacity to see will be seeing much more physically those who haven't been quite as awakened in terms of their their let's say they've been going to the spiritual gym and working out and developing their gifts 
it, they're still going to be bleed through it. People are going to be seeing stuff out of the peripheral vision. And they're saying um, a lot of it is going to blow people's minds in a good way, but they are going to need reassurance and support from the likes of us. And, and those watching the show, obviously, you know, I don't tend to get muggles watching my show. So, <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> love and light, but, you know, I tend to get people that are really interested in this subject matter. So those of you watching, you know, you may be called to step up. I also kind of get this message that, like, those of us who have been bullied for our abilities and for who we are and for speaking our truth or who have kind of been the black sheep and, and felt, like you said, on the periphery, there's going to be an embracing of us now and a respect for us as people start to have their own experiences and they suddenly realise, oh, holy cow, they weren't making it up. Is it real? So Alexandra was mass. right. <laughs> yeah, critical mass. There's too many of us awakened now and we can't go backwards. This is, it's, we're reaching this massive tipping point. Yeah. I don't know what ast astrologically is happening, but I'm seeing this showing me 2024 and the middle of 2024 being this huge tipping point. So yeah, I agree. I agree 100%. I think it's going to be absolutely enormous. And it, then it's going to go like dominoes. Amazing. It's going to go, you know, really like, and we're going to move from this focus on, you know, sort of contraction and the earth and our own material territorialism. And we're, we're going through such a heart expansion right now. And I often talk about welcoming an expanded consciousness of love. And that's one of the best mantras you can use. We are going to just expand our consciousness to the to the galaxies, to the cosmos and welcome it back in and step back into all that remembrance of the gifts and skills we had. And many people can feel that expansion of consciousness. You know, I, I talk to people saying, I'm going to burst. You know, my <laughs> heart is so big and my consciousness is moving so fast. I'm just going to burst in this little physicality because I just can't hold it anymore. And that's really exciting because they are the kind of John the Baptist for the rest of the collective. And so they can help to guide and reassure and lead people when it's going to be very destabilizing. I mean, this is a shift of the ages. This is a shift of the paradigms that and we have never ascended in physicality before, as I understand it. You know, we've never done that. So those of us who have some knowledge and some awareness you know we, nobody knows all of it because there's so much that's going to come in for us but nevertheless we might be slightly ahead of the game in knowledge we are going to help to lead and reassure and calm the people who you know starting from zero with you know, seeing angels and galactic beings all around me where you know, what's going on and it's it's all to do with your level of consciousness and frequency it's like Two people going into a haunted house, one, one person can see the ghost and the other one can't because we're just living at different dimensions, different frequencies, and we are all on our individual journey in how we are progressing with that. But yeah. between now and spring 2026, I think it's going to be massive in terms of the collective making a huge jump. That's it's so extraordinary. Uh, you can really see this divide in society at the moment. It's very present. I think it was Dolores Cannon spoke about the split in timelines. But I agree with you. I don't think it's straight split like that. I think there's multiple paths. I'm seeing multiple timelines. And a lot of the work I'm doing with people is helping to lift them onto the highest possible spiritual timeline. But I want to say to those of you doing that work, also ask for your highest physical material comfort timeline foundation to come up and match that because you don't want the rug being pulled out from under you in terms of your money and you know like if you're jumping ship from an old world you might find your job goes or something you want to make sure you're supported um but i just also you know i want to talk to the level of compassion coming through on this planet right now Dude. and those of us you know there are people you know stepping out of relationships where they felt like this was this is my everything this was going to be my future being in this relationship I'm seeing a lot of couples splitting up at the moment where people are literally I think the pandemic also made people kind of go holy cow life's for living I'm not holding back you know I'm just going to go for it I'm going to do what I want to do and I won't you know won't let anything get in my way but I also think we're being asked to make a choice right it's we're being asked to make a choice are we holding on to the old sinking ship there's a water analogy there again and or are we gonna are we gonna take a chance step off the cliff and trust that we'll fly and not fall and and head on a, a whole new trajectory 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, what you're talking about with relationships, Alexandra, is also very much that South Node in Libra, where we've stayed in a, in a relationship that may have been very compromising or, you know, we've just kind of bent ourselves into an advanced yoga position to, to keep the relationship going. Because that South Node has now moved into Libra, we're not going to do it anymore. And also because people's own frequency is accelerating so much, that's causing the split in relationships too. But we, we are, I think, on more individual timelines than we've we've ever experienced before. But but absolutely go with it because this is a unique evolutionary experience that we're going through, a unique evolutionary opportunity. And that's what's so exciting for us to grasp that with both hands and stay in that state of compassion, heart, love and expansion, expansion of our consciousness. And then we will be on the right track. We'll be on one of those those higher timelines if we can stay in that state. And that's what we're going to attract back into our reality because the universe is just a mirror. I love that. Is there anything? So you're amazing at looking at the astrology and tracking it back through history and kind of being able to say, right, well, this is happening now. It's similar to when X happened back then. Is there anything really extraordinary that we've never seen before going on in the skies right now that, that you're kind of going, wow, what is, what could this mean? Yeah. I think it's the discovery of the dwarf planets Maybe. because they only start and they are way out beyond the orbit of Pluto. You know, they're in deep space Eris has a, a, an orbit of 560 years, as I say, Sedna is 11,400. And they all started to be discovered by astronomers round about the, the late 1990s and into the beginning of, of the century, the early 2000s. So that's like a drop in the bucket for astrology, which has been going for thousands. You know, I think it's way beyond 6,000 years. Um, I think it was used by you know, galactic beings as well. So we are just at the beginning of understanding this higher octave of consciousness. And we have discovered those dwarf plants, I believe, because our, as humanity, our level of consciousness was high enough to perceive them. So we're in this feedback loop with the cosmos, this feedback loop. And as we start to understand the archetypes and how they can help us, and we're going from kind of individual personality to a whole shift of consciousness, as humanity, that's, I mean, that's where my interest lies, mm -hmm. where I get really, really excited and, you know, forget all the little stuff. Let's, let's look at the really big cosmic picture. That's where I'm really excited because we, we've never known that before, certainly not in recorded history. Have we ever, I mean, the ancient peoples way back may have had knowledge of them. Um, but certainly in our recorded history, we haven't been aware of them. And that's why it's a whole new paradigm. I love anything that backs up what I've experienced on a spiritual level where I haven't had the knowledge or the science. And I have a team of guides that they're galactic being incredible galactic beings. I haven't been, I haven't read anything about them online. I've never heard of anyone else speaking about them. They're these huge, very purple galactic beings. And I've seen them very physically when I've been walking down the street, I've had one walking next to me. If they if they feel fear, they will back off because they're so loving, but they are very powerful. And they call themselves the Akkadians, A-K-K-A-D-I-A-N-S. And the Akkadians tell me they come from a very, very, very far star that would be beyond our, con our level of consciousness, but that they were here at the dawn of our civilization during what we know as Akkadian times, Sumerian times. Mm -hmm. And they said that they directly taught humanity, mathematics, cuneiform. They shared their knowledge with us. So this astrology that you're discussing here completely backs up what they've told me. And it's phenomenal. They they will, like I remember I was walking down the street one day. I've had galactic experiences for a long time, but this one I found very powerful because I could see this 12-foot being out of the corner of my eye. And he was beautiful. And he said, I'm, I don't want to alarm you, so I'm not going to let you see me front on, but I want you to be aware of where I am. And he said, so can you tell me where I'm standing now? And then he moved behind me, and I was like, you're behind me, and now you're on my left, and da da da, da. And they've come in and out a few times. And I then more recently met a friend whose parents 
describe the same kind of being, had seen and met the same kind of being in their experience once or twice. So this is very real. These experiences are very real. They're very tangible. They're not just in the imagination. You know, when when I have visions, they're very real. They're very physical. They're very tangible. They're very embodied. And these beings are here to reassure us that even though things are happening that feel uh, unusual, unexpected, different and new, they aren't necessarily. That we hold the knowledge of all of this in our DNA and it's a it's a really great remembrance that we're actually reawakening to who we are supposed to be as a humanity. We are divine and they are our family. They are our brethren and there is nothing to fear. And a loving being, you know, you get a lot of astral beings that aren't always nice, but they need healing too. But a loving being will never be in the business of putting fear into you. But it's like they're really excited because they're like, yes, this time is coming and we're going to be able to feed you more knowledge much more easily. And they're also reminding me that the comets it said that the comets originally brought water to this planet and the comet coming in, that purple comet coming in, because that it's a similar colour that I see them in, this purpley, purple, royal purple colour. They're saying it's going to activate some of the dormant knowledge that's held in the waters of the earth so we'll be able to access more knowledge through the waters of the earth. And that's part of the agenda to toxify the water to stop this knowledge being activated. Never heard that before, but that's, wow. maybe, that's interesting. I, I, I knew that the water came from the, the far galaxy. The water came from to, to the Earth, and I was going to ask Vedra about it um, in a week or so. And it came from the far galaxy, so it contains some incredible information. And it's so interesting what you were talking about at the beginning of that section, Alexandra, because in my first book, I've got the history of astrology that, that is known to us, which began with ancient Samaria, 6,000 oh, wow. years ago. <laughs> When you know they went from supposedly primitive peoples to this huge leap in in it was knowledge, a jump, wasn't it? Huge jump, jump with mathematics and and understanding. And of course, they had no television or cinema or computer, so they were open to the skies and they developed this very good observation. You know, no calculators or anything. Very good, very precise observation of the movements of the planets. And so that's really where astrology, as we know it in our recorded history, began. But, you know, if you go back to the pyramids in Egypt, um, certain people like Graham Hancock believe they're way older than 6,000 years. And they are, you know, full of astrological symbolism. They're even aligned to, you know, the constellation of, Hori of Orion, et cetera, which is coming up big time with the Lion's Gate right now. Um, and that they used the language of astrology to leave there because it was no good doing that in Chinese or Spanish because it was for all humanity. So they used the language of astrology. And of course, the way the pyramids were built was not only aligned to the cosmos, but incredibly precise. We couldn't do, that's a wonderful documentary, we couldn't make it as precise with that building, even using diamond and laser saws these days. So, you know, these were not built with slaves ruling, you know, rolling stones on wheels, but also they are exactly the same kind of construction as the, as the Mayan pyramids in Mexico that had observatories on the top of the pyramids. So these were highly astronomical cultures. The ancient Egyptians, the ancient Mayans were extremely knowledgeable about the cosmos in a way that we have, I think, barely, barely scraped the surface of so, so far. And that, you know, whoa, whoa, that's why I get so excited because, you know, I think we are really on the brink of some incredible discoveries about the cosmos. So I'm thrilled to be an astrologer. Pam, so they're saying to you, so this is a saying, please tell Pam that there is new astrology coming through and that there's something I think about you that you're going to be involved in um, decoding some of this new astrology coming through somehow. They're saying to me that light language, which I, I, speak a lot in light language but it's does not necessarily a linear language it's a holographic language and they're showing me the links between the astrological symbols the egyptian hieroglyphs and the light language as being a living language it acts like plasma its frequency and it is coming in its codes from the stars into our dna into our knowledge and I have no idea about astrology. Well, a little bit of an idea about astrology, but nothing like you. So I don't, I'm going to leave that one with you. But I do see 
when I've been to Egypt, I can feel the hieroglyphs and they talk to me and I'm able to read them like an oracle. And I was shown um, as I was sat in front of the Sphinx, I got taken into the halls of Amenti and they opened this huge book and they gave me this massive download and they went, right, now you can read hieroglyphs. And I was like, what? And then everywhere I went, certain symbols would jump out at me and the walls were literally talking to me and I could read it like an oracle. It was like we left coded messages for ourselves in the ancient walls for us to be activated and it was activating my DNA as I was walking around and memories were opening up. Astrological symbols are the same, light language is the same, it goes beyond the logic, the logical, the rational mind, sacred geometry is the same, it takes us into the realms of just our innate divine knowing and I think this is maybe where the new astrology is going isn't about necessarily sitting down and mapping the stars and the planets it's just tuning into the frequency of them somehow and getting access you know tuning into a planet or a star or an alignment and just getting the download through on some level but that is so it, it's accelerated learning it's accelerated and you can really feel it i love these conversations with you because i just feel the energy of it just it's it's really flowing well, that's fascinating because I've been I've been told and I really feel it in my bones. I've had two very strong lifetimes in in Egypt. One was also working you know, underneath the Sphinx with mathematicians and intuitives um, to develop the pyramids. But the other one was when I was um, I used to work in the inner, inner temple of Isis. And my job was to prepare that tiny inner temple for the initiates for the ceremonies. And so I'd run my hands like, you know, rosary beads, I'd run my hands around the hieroglyphics to, to prepare the energy correctly for the initiation ceremonies. And I just feel that in my bones. So yeah, strong, wow, <laughs> strong, really strong links Maybe there. that's where we knew each other, mate. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so many visions of Egypt. And Imhotep is very present and he's very much talking about the architectural alignment to the stars it was a map of the stars on the earth um and it's like he's showing me modern day buildings and going we've forgotten how to do that we've forgotten how to map the stars but it's starting again and yesterday I spoke to a beautiful woman who creates stone spirals in the earth and their star portals and she's absolutely beautiful and what I love about this is that she found me through our previous interview oh so, wow like, the linking up of People that have the knowledge that have remembered and, and done the work and regained the knowledge, a lot of us have been doing it on our own, really struggling. Where do I fit in? And we're finding each other again. So isn't this beautiful? It's Thank a web so of light. It's, a web, it's like spider's web. It's a web of light that's spreading yeah. and spreading all across the globe. You know, it's this, this grid of light that we're creating as the energetic architecture for New Earth. That's it. That's it. And our bodies are part of that as well. Yeah. Pam, I love you. This has been absolutely amazing. I could talk to you for ages and ages, but I know that, you know, we won't stop if we keep going and then we'll be taking off and like shooting rockets to the stars. <laughs> we'll never come back. <laughs> I love our conversations, Alexandra. You know, we never know where they're going to go, but they they also feel, they always feel so exciting, energetically, so inspiring. And, and I hope it's helped people who, who are going to be listening to this too. You know, I agree really too, honey. I really do agree. And yeah, just... Just again, like to all of you watching and listening, like we're doing it. We're, we're doing it. Trust the process. Trust the universe and focus on what you want, not what you don't want. And imagine it's already here and and we're going to gonna, gonna co-create it together. And it's so beautiful. We're, we're rocking it. We're rocking it. We are. I <laughs> love it. Thank you so much, honey. I'm going to hopefully I'll speak to you again soon and we can swap notes and see what else comes of um the new comet coming in and all the other exciting things. Amazing. Yeah, really look forward to that. Would love to do that, Alexandra. Thank you so much for your time and for the opportunity and, and love to everybody out there. And just trust the invisible. Step into love. Step into expansion. And we're getting there really quickly. Amazing. Thank you, Pam. Have a gorgeous day. And thank you, everyone, for watching. And I'll see you soon. Bye for now, everybody.